what is a binary heap? A binary heap is a semi-sorted data structure defined by a minimum or a maximum. It can be formatted in an array or a tree. For the purposes of this video, we will be discussing the binary heap tree. And it is a completely filled tree, meaning that before we could move on to the fourth level of the tree, we would have to fill out the entire third level, meaning each parent had two children, which in the case of this tree, uh, we would be ready to move on to the fourth level. It's semi-sorted because when it's defined by the minimum or maximum, only the greatest or least value is at the root, but beyond that, it is not, does not necessarily follow an exact sort from least to greatest. Um, for the purposes of this video, we will be discussing a minimum heap, the more, the more common of the two types. The properties of a heap are the root, the pointer, and the count. The root points to the very first element in the heap. It is the minimum of the heap, and it is basically the whole reason why we have a heap is to hold this minimum value. Uh, the pointer is used to look at various nodes in the heap and also make switches when necessary. And the count, which is one major difference between a binary tree and a binary heap, um, is used to find the last node in the tree. Um, a binary tree does not have a count because it's unnecessary. The methods of a binary heap are add, remove root, and heapify, all of which we will get into. Add. So an important part of add is finding the last node in the tree. It's possible to reach the last node of a complete binary tree using the count of the nodes in the tree. Uh, we begin by converting the count into its binary form. An example of a binary heap with five nodes, five is 101 in binary. You remove the first number in its bi binary form and look through the characters. 0 means go to the left, and 1 means go to the right, starting from the root. So in this example, we have five nodes in our binary heap. That means that the number we're looking at is 0, 1. Start with the first number, 0, go to the left. Then 1, go to the right. There's the last node, 7. So the add function, data is added to the tree using the last open space, using the algorithm described previously. Data then traverses the tree by percolating up, which means that data is compared to its parent, and if necessary, they're switched. This eliminates the need to resort the tree. So in this example, 2 has been added to the last available space in the tree. 2 is compared to 6. 2 is less than 6, so they switch. 2 is then compared to 5. 2 is less than 5, so they switch again. And now we have a completely sorted binary heap with two at the root. Remove root is similar to add, um, although in some ways the opposite. It returns the minimum value in the heap, which is always the root, and then moves the last filled node to the root using the same algorithm for finding the last node. Um, the purpose of this is to be able to use the minimum value in the heap. It's been stored and now you can pull it out and use it and then you move the last node into the root so that you can resort it back into a complete binary heap. The heapify function resorts the heap after a removal. It takes the new root, which was the last filled node, and percolates it downward rather than upward. Uh, to do this, we will compare the root to the least of its two children and switch if necessary. This also sorts the heap after running only once. So an example here, 4 is less than 6, so it's the one that's going to be compared. 4 is less than 9, so they will switch. 5 is less than 7, so it is now the one that's going to be compared. 5 is less than 9, so they switch. And now we have a completely resorted heap. That concludes the theoretical discussion of binary heaps. Next, we will move to a C-sharp implementation of a binary heap. Okay, so here we have our application written in C-sharp that will demonstrate a binary heap. Um, it, the heap should be able to take an infinite number of uh, nodes and add them to the heap to create as big a heap as necessary. But for the purposes of this example, there will be a user inputted 
seven text boxes that build the heap. Um, so when the user clicks the start button, um, the nodes are created with using the data given through the text boxes, and the heap is given is created using this node array and the constructor in heap. Um, the heap constructor takes the nodes, it sets the count equal to zero, and for each one of the nodes in the array, the add function is run. So the add function, we take a node and we check to see if the root is null. If it is null, then we set the node equal to the root and the count is updated. Otherwise, the pointer will be set to the root and we will convert our count into binary. An important part of this um, line of the code is that we're using the count plus one here, not just the count, because we are looking for the first empty node in the heap, not the last filled node. So going through our string of binary characters, um, we are starting at the first character in the index rather than the zeroth because we are going to skip the first um, character in the sequence. Um, if, it is e if the first character is equal to zero, then we will go left. And if it is equal to right, then we will go right. And we will continue that until we get to the end. Each time we check to see if the... Um, if the left or right is null, in which case we have found the first empty node, and we will create a new node there to be filled by our data. So next, we add the data from the inputted node to our new node on the heap, and we begin to percolate up. Um, at any point, if the pointer is equal to the root, then we will break, because there's no higher that it could go. And then we... And so starting at the bottom, um, if the data in the um, pointer, or in this case the added node to the heap, is less than its parent, then they will switch using a temporary um, integer to switch the data. Um, if the, at any point the tested heap node is greater than its parent, then we'll break the loop because it has reached its final destination. And finally, we update the count to reflect this new addition. So that is how the heap is initially created. Another possibility uh, for the user is cr clicking on the add button after inputting a number into the text box, which would add a, another number to the heap, and we do run heap.add to reflect that addition. The last possible function for a user is the remove button, which will remove a root from the heap, and that will be reflected through the remove function. So to remove a root from the heap, we will be returning an integer. This is because the whole purpose of the remove function is to be able to use the lowest number in the group of numbers. Um, we will set our integer output equal to root.data because we know what we're looking for right away. But the whole purpose of remove is to resort the heap after a removal. Um, so we still have more to do. We'll set the pointer equal to the root. Um, convert the count into binary. We're converting just the count this time into binary, not count plus one, because in when we're looking for count plus one, we're looking for the first empty node, but this time we are looking for the last filled node, and to do that, we only need the count. Um, same as before, if, it's, if the first number in the string is zero, we go left. If the is one, we go right, continuing on until we get to the last node. Um, in this case, we don't need to look for an empty node because when formatted correctly, there should be no empty nodes when looking for the last filled node. Um, next, we set the data of the root equal to the data of the pointer, which is currently pointed at the last filled node. Um, this is how we move that last filled node up into the root. Um, then we delete the last filled space in the heap. Uh, we'll do this by going to the parent of the pointer and looking at left and right and seeing if it is equal to the last filled node, and if it is, then we will make it null. And also subtract from the count because we're removing. Next, we heapify. So the heapify function, um, we will create a node which is going to hold the node that is being compared to the pointer. Um, we create that, instantiate that here. Um, 
then we set the pointer back equal to the root to start up at the top. The root holds the data um, from the last filled node, the previous last filled node, which was removed, um, and we begin our loop. If at any point the left child of the pointer is null, we know that we are at the end of the heap and we can break the loop. Um, and also, it's important to figure out whether the right um, ch child of the pointer is null, because in that case, we would only be comparing to the left no matter what. Um, otherwise, we are going to see which of its children is less and set compare um, equal to the least of the two numbers. Um, then we can compare pointer to its child, and if it is greater, then we will switch the data and um, run it again. Otherwise, we know that we are at the end of the um, line for that downward percolation, and we are ready to be finished. All right, so now we will take a look at this application modeling a binary heap. Um, we'll start by adding in some integers randomly. It can be any sort of numbers. And when we start, they should line up into a binary heap. Um, so here we go. Yeah, the 2 is the least number in the group of numbers, so it's going to be at the root. Um, and then when we remove that root, 7, which was the last filled node, was moved to the top. It was compared to its still ch two children. Three is less than seven. Is less than six. Three is less than six. So that is going to be compared to seven. They make the switch, and yeah, that works well. Now let's add a low number, one, which should become the new root when we add it. And yes, it looks at its parent. They need to switch, so they switch. Once again, it looks at its parent, and they need to switch, and they switch. And that's a binary heap. Uh, once again. This binary heap class could technically hold as many nodes as necessary, but for the purpose of this demonstration, we only had seven. Um, I hope you liked this video, and I hope it was informative. Thank you.